Kata Lando Katonze Brata Lisonde Katamba Litakai Rata Kapontandos Atombri Kataya Zitamba La Katomba Ris Atuata Lanten Dondanga Tolita Zibarosh Kalotama Asonima Ande Kataya Lante Kayato Brava Lita Ashkwapala Mia Tolis Atom Mananda Mendenduas Apala Katomba Nasketai Lika Baros Atom Valakatuaza Zabalota kama nekataya Elata kwaya etamanas ebaru tuata Etalos abantu wash etai banruda Le de 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 kata Elato kopara de kataya kata Akoto kapaya katuma Ibalota kama nakatoma nakata Lato kaponda kataya Zuta liko toma nash eparata Landendondangandongendondandengendonda Imandondenga ndungendumbanganga Akoto kapaya Zuta matoa Atubaruta atoya Lakatada kataka yokata Labroto toka paskataya Miantos kapala katuma nakayadoka Lakos aponda kataya Lantos kapala katuma nadeka tuwasa Landere talita kaya Aluta kamane katuwa shatalata Ibarota katala katai Lando kataya Ibarus atomba la kata Lata li katoma naka Ibaru tatata iru tatata katua Alato te kayata Ilato nama nakata Ilande katoma nas etaya kapaya Ilata li katoma nande Abra do 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 Ado do do Ikabada dirata Ado do do la Nakatabalita, Jatoma Niko Balito Kua, Atoskapa. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor. God is going to do something great and something unusual in your life. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Um, I want you to just greet your neighbor and uh, that neighbor who's besides you, just greet them and tell them. May the good Lord show you grace. Look at the system is, is, is behave, misbehaving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, remove the ox cable. Praise God. Praise God. God is an awesome God and God is a good God. Praise God. Let us just pray and surrender. Let us just pray and surrender today's service into the presence of God. Praise God. Just pray and surrender today's service.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray and um, surrender today's service in the presence of God. I believe beyond any doubt that somebody is going to be blessed tonight. I believe beyond any doubt that somebody's destiny is going to be changed. Praise God. I want you just to pray to say, God, may you take over and may you speak a word today. May you speak a word that will touch my life. May you speak a word that will change my destiny. May you speak a word that will transform the whole of my being. Praise God. Up your mouth and begin to pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty Father. Mando katomba ris katomba lataka itokos kapande kandu ante likabarutakai. You are God, and apart from me, there is no other. We thank you. We bless your name, Father, in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. We may you speak a word that will touch somebody's life. May you speak a word that will touch somebody's destiny. May you speak a word that will touch mighty God and change somebody's life. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. Father, you are God and apart from me there is no other. We thank you. We bless you. We macrograph your name. Thank you mighty God. Mighty Father, we know beyond any doubt that somebody tonight as they leave this place, somebody this afternoon as they leave this place and anybody seeing it might be online. I thank you mighty God. Mighty Father, that mighty God, that situation that has been troubling their life, that situation that has been a problem problem in their lives. They will see a total transformation, a total reformation, and the mighty hand of the living God shall be seen changing their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Sit down, but don't go down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just greet your neighbor once again and say, neighbor, neighbor. say, neighbor, neighbor. Be, my, uh, be my watchman today motivate me don't discourage me Amen. hallelujah Amen. don't sit beside someone who's cold because <laughs> you end up also being cold or end up being a what's that word that was used stiff, stiff. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah Amen. praise god praise god praise god we are going to be speaking today on discerning the voice of god Praise, of, praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, discerning the voice of God. Discerning the voice of God. Uh, I don't, are you hearing me? Discerning the voice of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? Praise God. Are you excited? Let me see excitement. Are you excited? Amen. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 14. Matthew 14. Praise God. Matthew chapter number 14. Matthew chapter number 14. I will read. I will read from verse number 27. Matthew 14 from verse 27. Praise God. But immediately he spoke to them saying. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Maybe let's start from 26. All right, let's start from 23. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. 
he went up on the mountain by himself to what? To pray. When it was evening, he was alone there. But the boat by this time was already a distance from the land, tossed and battered by the waves. For the wind was great against them, and in the fourth watch of the night, which is around 3 to 6 a.m., Jesus came to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. Some would say it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter replied to him, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come on you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came, came towards where Jesus was. But when he saw the effects of the wind, he was terrified and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Somebody say, Lord, save me. Lord, save Somebody say, Lord, save me. One of the things that you have to understand is there is no dispute that God is supreme. There is no dispute that God is omnipowerful, omnipresent, omniscient. There is no discipline that God carries the controlling power of everything that exists. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. I said, am I communicating to somebody here? The Bible tells us of a time after Jesus had done a miracle and had fed a thou thousands of people. And the Bible says he dismissed people and after he dismissed people, the Bible says that he went to the mountain so that he can pray. He went to the mountain so that he can pray. Hallelujah. You, you, you began to understand uh, the the, the, the the way Jesus lived his life and you begin to understand how he operated. Despite seeing a miracle and despite God using him to do a miracle, he did not dwell on the miracle that has been done. I always tell people that that is why most of the things we continuously do not advertise. Not because they cannot be advertised, but because when you dwell on the way, when you dwell on the works of God, you begin to see yourself not having the hunger to seek the ways of God. So despite Jesus doing a miracle and something that had never been seen, breaking bread, after dismissing the people, they did not do an after party. He did not go around asking people, how did you see me? The Bible says he went to the mountain to pray. You have to understand that the moment you begin to see results, it is an alarm for you to be consistent to what brought results. So many people get to a place whereby they pray when they are under pressure. They pray when things are not going well. They pray when life is putting them is putting them on a corner. When situations are beating them, battering them, and putting them hands down. But when situation begins to change, you see people beginning to relax, and that is what mostly what the enemy is looking for, because the enemy can bless you to bind you. There are, there, are, there are people that were prayerful and the way they were prayerful, they became so volatile that the enemy was no longer comfortable. There were people that were tired of struggling, tired of suffering, entered into prayer and began to pray. And in the event of praying, little did they know, they were no longer just praying for themselves, but they entered a realm where they began to pray for their whole family. They entered a realm where they began to deal with outer situations, hexes and cases that were
they put in their families. And it is at that point the enemy saw that if I keep on pressuring this person, something is about to be broken. And suddenly something like a breakthrough came. And the moment they relaxed, a generational case they were supposed to break was not broken. The enemy can bless you to buy. That is why you realize that every great person gets to a place where they go through certain afflictions. Every great person gets to a place where they go through certain troubles, battles. And sometimes you ask yourself, why am I going through what I'm going through? Those are the questions that many people ask themselves. You realize that most of the times when you read your Bible, I love it when it says God will not bring a temptation that is higher than your ability to resist. Oh, you are not hearing me. So it means that in the scales of heaven, God looks at your ability and your anointing. And God looks at the situation, the problem that is coming. And if it is bigger than your ability to resist, God stops it. So there is no situation that you went through that God did not vet to see if you have capacity to overcome it. Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. There is no situation. And in all that you went through, I spoke to us last week, or when you read your Bible, in the book of Judges, chapter number what? Chapter number three. From verse one. Where the Bible says, these are the nations that the Lord left. So that he might teach the Israelites how to fight war. The nations were left. The nations were there. But they were not there so that they can defeat the Israelites. In actual real life and carnal life, it seems as if it was a battle. But in the spirit and according to God's plan and predestination, those were not battles. Those were trainings. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. So God says in Judges chapter number 3, these are the nations God left that he might teach them how to fight war. And there, somebody, hear me, I think I, I touched the point where I said there are people that actually died on the training. <laughs> Your ability to resist. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? <laughs> You can be trained to become an electrician, but if your skills are not sharpened, the same electricity you know can deal with you. <laughs> so, you have to understand the aspect of consistency. That is the greatest limitation of believers nowadays. Every believer knows how to pray. They know how to give. They know how to fast. The only thing they do not know is how to be consistent. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. How, to, how to keep yourself focused on a direction without being distracted. Getting to a form where you are totally focused. That you can get into a prayer. And for the next 11 hours, you are not thinking about your phone. You are not thinking about food. You are just there standing. People are surprised. Why are you so consistent? Consistency does not mean there are no obstacles. Consistency means you choose to focus on your goal. Let me show you. Am I going to get into somebody? Amen. It is like a person who is studying at school. While you are studying, there are many things that can take your attention. But what makes you to keep on studying while others are playing football? You are focused on a goal. So Jesus, after seeing miracles happening, he went back to prayer. And the Bible says he was there alone the whole night. Not thinking about the miracles. Not thinking about the disciples. The same source where I got the power. I must go back there. 
Because the more you stay with men, the more you lose more of God. God anoints you for men, but don't become a man of the people. Because what you are given, it is filled. That is why the Bible says you shall be filled of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that there are people that are in our days now, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they did not read the scripture where Apostle Paul says you need to be refilled. There are times you feel empty. <laughs> there are times you feel you are spiritually weak. So the apostle comes and tells, and he tells us to say, build up your holy self, praying in the spirit. So Jesus went into the mountain and he was praying. And this brings me to a place that I think I'm going to speak about it, where the Bible tells us about Elijah. That Elisha was passing by a place called Shunem. Every day, he was passing by that place. And the Bible declares that as he was passing by that place, there was a woman who was always at the balcony. Someone is always watching you. <laughs> there was a woman who was at the balcony watching the prophet every time. And she got to a place where the Bible says, she looked and she said, I perceive and I know that this man is a man of God. I want to build an upper chamber for him in my house and put a bed, a table, a chair. And that is where Elijah was, Elisha was being given bread and water every time he passes. It surprises you that he prophesied to the child of the Shulamite woman who was not yet existent. And he said, next year, about this time, you will be carrying a child. It surprises me that after the child died, Elisha was not found in the upper room. But the Shulamite woman found Elisha in the mountain consistency. What you attain by prayer is maintained by prayer. Amen. What you attain by fasting is maintained by fasting. And sometimes it becomes difficult when you become comfortable. Looking at maybe the hours you were praying before. Praise God. Amen. So Jesus goes to the mountain and the Bible says he was praying in the mountain alone. And I understand that most of the things that happen in the spirit, like what I explained to us, that everyone is spiritual and God is consistently communicating to us. Most of the impulses you feel in you, it might be your body, your feelings. Most of the times it is not you. It is God communicating to you. But using the senses that are on you before you begin to master certain senses of the spirit. Praise God. Amen. That's why I explained that when you read your Bible, the Bible says, and Samson went to Timnah and saw a woman. And everyone says, Samson is a womanizer. Samson loves women. Samson is lustful. But when you read down the scripture, the Bible says, it was the Lord who made Samson to be attracted to a Philistine because he wanted to find a way to revenge the Philistines. So when you read that, it brings you to a place and a perspective where your eyes have to open to say, so do you mean to tell me that God actually hacked the emotions of a person to fulfill his purpose? <laughs> Am I communicating to someone? Amen. To him, he feels, I love this lady. To God, he's saying, I know I said a commandment to say never marry a woman who's not an Israelite. But on this particular environment and situation, I'm going to hack his emotion. And I believe if his eyes would have opened, said, what was I doing? <laughs> Praise God. So there are many times when God speaks to you. And sometimes he does not speak in an audible voice like many people would want to. 
Sometimes you just push you into prayer. You just feel like I need to get into prayer. I need to fast. And by that time, God is trying to train you aspects of his voice so that you can be familiar with his dealings with you. Everyone has had God. Praise God. Amen. Everyone has had God. Everyone has had a resistant voice that is not God. You have heard that voice that said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And you have heard another one that was saying, nah, let's do it. And you can differentiate and know that this voice is not a holy voice. So that is how you master when God communicates to men. Because most of the times there is no way you can get to a place where you, 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 you just can become accurate. Why? Because most of your years, 20 years, you have been living in a kind of world and from even school you are never taught about spirituality. So it is when you made the decision to begin to respect the aspects of spirituality that you begin to pursue knowing God more. So you begin to go through those stages of understanding how God deals with you because how he speaks to him is not how he speaks to you. Praise God. So Jesus goes to the mountain and the Bible says when he was there, he began to pray. And the Bible says the boat was already far and the winds were tossing the boat. So Jesus comes down from the mountain. And because he's a man who was praying, not carnal prayer. He was a man praying in the spirit. Because Apostle Paul tells us that build up your holy self praying in the spirit. Showing you that there are people that pray in the flesh. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There is someone who pray for the next 11 minutes. The mind, the spirit is intertwined. Because this is, uh, all right, this is how God speaks to men. When the mind and the spirit meets, God begins to speak. Why? Because when God speaks to your spirit, the mind has got to process what he has spoken. So that you can be able to articulate. It is on the mind where we speak about interpretation. So most of the times you realize that God locks a message in your spirit. And sometimes when you wake up after a dream, say, I dreamt a dream, I know it was God. But somewhere, somehow, because your mind has not been attuned and is not intertwined with the spirit, you become confused. You can't interpret it. Especially to people that are ministers. Sometimes, even not being a minister, if you can pray with a person in intercession, there is a way you can feel that you need to speak to that person. But somewhere, you do not really find the right words in your spirit to speak to that person. But you feel the spirit is pushing you. Because when the mind and the spirit meets, God begins to speak. So Jesus was there in the mountain. Balusato ikataka yakata. Ratoto kata yakato kata. Atoto For the whole night, Ibra kneeling down. When he left prayer, the Bible says he began to walk on water on a boat that was afar off. The speed of a man walking even on, on the sea that is waves was faster than men that were on a boat. Many people want the spirit to become a certain clove. A certain place, a, a certain vacuum where you enter. Yet when you begin to understand how God operates, you understand that spirituality is you, around you, and the whole being of you. It is just that you do not understand. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. It is only among us when a person who has had is prayed for and is healed that who clap hands and jump around. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Have you ever heard a witch 
speaking a testimony that I flew with a broom. <laughs> it is natural. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody. Am I communicating to somebody? It is natural. One should begin to understand that the you is the spirit. The you is the what? The spirit. So Jesus began to walk on water. And when he arrived at the boat, because he is dealing with people that do not understand spirituality. He's dealing with people that have long been in the flesh. By that time, maybe they ate and their stomachs are so full to a point that spirituality is far from them at that point. <laughs> the Bible says they saw him walking. They saw that someone is walking. And the first thing that came in their mind is it is a ghost. Do you know that many people, their mind when it comes to spirituality is more leaned on the negative than the positive? Do you know that many people when it comes to spirituality, their, mind, their minds are more linked to evil more than good? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And that is what makes a lot of people not to get to a place where they are awakened spiritually. Because most of the things that many have been taught is contrary from the realm of the spirit. That is why you desire to pray for the next 70 days so that you can enter into the spirit. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But for you to understand things of the physical, you did not put such pressure. So the first thing that one has to understand is recognize that you are a spiritual being. The moment you recognize and acknowledge that you are a spiritual being, you begin to see yourself operating in a different way. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. Somebody say, I hear, you. I hear you. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Praise God. Amen. So they said he is a ghost. And the Bible declares that Jesus then said to Peter, it is I. It is I. Now, one of the things that you understand on that aspect is the Bible is telling us that these men had stayed with Jesus for long. That when he spoke, they picked his voice without him speaking his name. He did not need to speak his name. The moment they heard his voice, they recognized it was him. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yes. Am I communicating to somebody here? They understood it was him. The second thing you need to understand is you need to spend much of your time in spiritual activities. In which many people can't. Oh, God. Galatians 5, verse 16. Galatians 5, verse 16. If you are there, say, I'm there. <laughs> Galatians chapter number 5, verse 16. Praise God. But I say habitually, somebody say habitually. Uh, if it's your Bible underline, if you borrowed it, don't. Habitually, in habitually walk in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the fleshly nature which responds impulsively without regard for what God commands. 
The word habitually, you have to understand it is speaking about an environment, a shelter. So when the Bible says habitually walk in the spirit, it's saying that it must not only become your habit, but you must become a habitant resident of the spirit. And the Bible is showing us the two ways in which a person can walk in the spirit. The Bible says, number one, be re seek him. Seek him. Not that he's hiding. When you are seeking God and when you are walking in the Holy Spirit, that is why you understand David spoke in the book of Psalms. David said to the children of Israel, God showed them his works. What are the works of God when you don't have school fees and God comes to a place that in the last day of submission, suddenly the account man is deposited. Those are the works of God. When you're getting to a place where you are sick and the doctors have said there is no cure for your disease and suddenly, all of a sudden you wake up and you are energetic, the doctors test you and they see there is no more disease. Those are the works of God. The works of God are the end products of the ways of God. What are the ways of God? The ways of God is how God operates so that the works of God can come to be of manifestation. So the children of Israel only understood the works, which are the miracles. But the desire of God is that believers may come to a place where they understand his ways. How he does it. Where you can boldly stand, uh, like Apostle Paul says, some were given so that they can have the ability to work out miracles. Not to, oh, Yamarus Kalapandeka, Epologobodaka. Not to pray for a miracle. Ah, uh, you are not hearing me. Not to intercede for a miracle. To work out a miracle. Oh. I know we pray and miracles happen. I know we fast and miracles happen. But the dimension I'm talking about, God is saying, I want you to get into a place where you work it out. Where you understand the ingredients that allows you to operate in that vein. That is why you realize that many people, they get to a place where when it comes even to healing, there are people that specialize in the crippled. There are people that specialize in deaf and dumb. No matter if you wake them up, they know the codes to trigger for such a miracle to happen. And the realm of the spirit is not complicated as many languages can say. But it gets back to an aspect of what is your understanding of what the realm is. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. So you can check if, if David says that Moses was shown the ways of God. We see when God meets Moses, the first thing God said to Moses, Moses saw a burning bush that was burning, but it was not burning. And God told him, remove your shoes for this is holy ground. The first thing that God said to him was, what is in your hand when he said, I'm sending you? And Moses said, the only thing that I have is a rod. And the Lord said, throw it down. Throw it down. God was trying to show him how he operates. But God had to make sure that in teaching Moses, he does not teach Moses with a material that is not with him. Oh. God had to find characteristics that are on Moses. Things that Moses had. There is no miracle that will happen outside what is around you. <laughs> you will never in your life find a harsh pastor. Am I going to get into somebody? 
You will never find a harsh word. You know why? Because for the pastoral office, God needs a shepherd. So he looks not at the ability, he looks at the heart to nature. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is why it is easy to find impatient evangelists. Because their nature is to tell you the way you, it is your decision to choose. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When God chose David, he says, I found a man after my own heart. Most, uh, David. David was not chosen because he was short or he was handsome. <laughs> David was not chosen because he knew how to play a heart. The criteria in which God chose David with was because of his heart. So every time when God wants to use you, he first has to scan you. So that to see if you are fit for that particular mandate, or he has to find someone who is fit and look for something else for you. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so even sometimes when you pray for abundance, God checks because God will never give you a miracle that will kill you. Oh God. So Jesus was praying. <laughs> so Jesus was praying. And while he was praying, he began to walk to the water. And the Bible says when they heard him, everyone kept quiet when Jesus says they have courage, but Peter spoke something. He said, if it is you, I, I know your voice, but I need to confirm for myself. I know it is your voice, but I don't just want to operate in an environment or a place where I'm hearing it is God. I need to come to a place where I experience it. I live in the realm of the one who is leading me. If it is you, bid me to come. If it is you, tell me to operate and to come to the environment where you are. And the Bible says, Jesus looked at Peter and said, come. <laughs> come. And the Bible where we read, remember, remember, Peter began to walk on water. And the Bible declares that as Peter was walking on the water, he got to a place where he looked on the other side. And he saw the volatility of the wind. He saw how aggressive the wind was. And the Bible says he began to sink. Do you know the reason why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight? It's because once you begin to operate in the spirit, once you begin to walk in the spirit, Focusing on aspects of the physical becomes your distraction. That is why the scripture we read says, walk in the spirit so that you may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The first thing is to seek him. The second thing is to recognize him and be responsive to him. And most of the times it is on the responsiveness that the Holy Spirit teaches us how to walk with him. That time where you are where you are sleeping in around three, he just makes sure he switches off the data that streams dreams and sleep. And all of a sudden you can't sleep. And you can hear he's speaking inside to say, just wake up and pray. You try to pull the blanket, but sleep does not come. And by that time, he's teaching how to be responsive to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> he's teaching how to be responsive to him. How to be responsive to him. I remember there was a time the same kind of a scenario was done on me with the Holy Spirit. where I was given a specific diet to eat. So they knew that 
even after I finish fasting, I don't eat anything else, a specific diet. And like everyone, there are times that I would pray. And that responsiveness of what the Holy Spirit was, was doing, that it was no longer that I have to set an alarm. He himself, I would know it is him who has pushed me to pray. And it came to a place where it was no longer a timetable. There were times it would just be a quickening. It would just be what? I did not know that these are trains of the spirit. Until I got to a place where I visited a certain place for a crusade. While I was in the event of that training with the spirit. When I was in that place, first day, it was fire. My God, my God, it was fire in that village. Second day, oh, it was fire when I slept that night. <laughs> While I was sleeping, <laughs> resting from the jumping and the deliverances, there was a sound outside. Like what I told you, that consistency is good because most of the times the reason why you should be consistent is the enemy understands that the things of the spirit are like your car. A car cannot move without oil. The moment oil finishes, the car, if you force it to move, the engine will knock. It is same like a person who keeps on trying to push when the anointing is no longer present. I'm not talking at a place where you have seen people being beaten by demons. I'm talking about beyond. So you understand that this spiritual engine, the reason why you should pray and continuously desire and seek God that he fills with the anointing is that is the only thing that makes you to be mobile. Many people that feel as if they are stagnant, it is just a sign that the oil in you is, on, is, is, is now low. Some have the fuel. The fuel. Hear me. The car can be full of fuel, but if the oil is not there, don't they? Many people have the word. They can quote scripture. The fuel, they have it. They can quote scripture. I can do all things, but the oil. The oil. Lack of oil can turn a, a preacher to become an orator. Why? Because they will, the effect of the spirit will no longer be present. Am I communicating to somebody? This is where you see a believer getting to a place where they feel like there is stagnation in their lives. You can never be stagnant when the oil is there. Even Isaiah says, it shall come to pass by the reason of the oil that the yoke shall be destroyed. When the oil is there, anything that stops mobility is rendered powerless. So Jesus had to pray and they were busy on a boat and he was praying. Feeling himself agabam rutam ikatakayakata dada dua atolo ikunama leto kopala katua gruta utama katua ka braka kaka 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 da leto kum ikapata kata kumakada. The world is reacting while he is praying, and suddenly he's walking on water, and they're surprised what's happening. The man is now walking in a different dimension. Hindrances are no longer there. Hindrances are no longer there. <laughs> they are no longer there. So Peter, when he says, bid me to come, Jesus says, come. And Peter began to walk on water. And one of the things you need to understand was that Peter was not walking on water. Peter was walking on the word, come. Peter was not walking on water. Peter was walking on the word. Come. If it is you, bid me to come. So when Jesus said, come, the 
the word became a carpet. As long as you are walking to the word come and believing in the word come, no matter how many waves you may be seeing, you can walk on water. I'm not to mean somebody tonight. I said I'm not communicating to somebody here. A lot of people, the reason why the feelings of things are not moving is because there is that one word spoken by God. Hear me. When God speaks, he does not speak in paragraphs. When God speaks, he does not speak in counter books and compositions. When God speaks, he speaks a word. That is why you see David decree and said, once you have spoken and twice in the head. When God wanted light to come forth, God did not speak a paragraph. He says, let that light. He does not speak he commands. So when Jesus said come Peter began to walk on the word. Peter began to walk on the faithfulness of the word. Because the Bible declares his word shall not return to him void. But it shall fulfill what he sends it to do. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said am I communicating to somebody here? The faithfulness of his word is the spirituality of the being. Once you are filled with the word, you have the flow to operate in the spiritual. That is why you realize that most of the times when you are reading the word, there is a way that you begin to feel muscular. The same Bible declares that faith by hearing and by hearing the word. Faith is an inbuilt muscle, it is built by accumulating the word. And many people do not understand the power which is in the word. When Jesus said, Come, Peter began to fly. Peter began to walk on water. Water that was liquid became ice. Water that was liquid became solid. Why? Because the word had been spoken from the spirit. I believe that is why you see the Bible declare in the book of Proverbs, death and life lies in the power of the tongue. And those that what is fear, it's the fruit of it. Child of God, if you understand the powerfulness of the word, you know how to declare into your life. If you understand the power of the words that come out of your mouth, built by the spirit, you know how to recreate your life. Am I communicating to somebody here? Shout a here or here. Shout a here or here. The Bible declares in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11, the Bible declares that by faith we believe that the world was framed by the world. Am I communicating to somebody? So if the world was framed by the word. When you get to a place where you feel that your world is crashing, when you get to a place when you feel that your world is going down, when you get to a place when you feel that everything around you is in a mess, if it was framed by the word, let's go to what framed it and reframe it. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord fill you with the word. When you shall decree into your life, when you shall decree into your destiny, when you shall decree into your finances, may that be a turn around. Am I communicating to somebody? Shut Oh God, you look at your life. You look at your life. You look at your wallet. I say, I understand the authority that I carry. Am I communicating to somebody here? There is no miracle that happened in the world without a word being spoken. Every miracle, they had to be a declaration. They had to be a proclamation. They had to be somebody who had to speak a word. Am I communicating to somebody? I don't know where you are. I don't know where you came from. What has been happening in your life, but there is something that I know that God is about to show Himself in your life. Am I communicating to somebody here? So He said, Come, Peter began to walk on water. There was a price in him walking on water. How is it that such a man can just begin to walk on water? Peter, what's happening? I believe Peter looked, looked and said, Guys, I'm going. I don't know what's ahead, but I have the faith that if it is him, something must happen. Child of God, if you want to come to a place where you go far in life, if you want to go far in life, don't follow the crowd. Follow the cloud. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, Am I communicating to somebody here? When you follow the crowd, you follow opinions. When you follow the crowd, you follow ideas that have failed before. When you follow the crowd, you end where the crowd is. 
signs, but when you follow the cloud, you are following the glory, and the Bible declares that we go from glory to glory. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, Am I communicating to somebody here? There is somebody sitting right here, and they are listening to the sound of my voice. There is something that I know that in the next year, about this time, this is not where you should be. There is a lifting up that is coming over your life. Am I communicating to somebody? They will look at you next year and they wonder what happened. Any miracle that can happen, there is a word that is to be spoken. Many are waiting for certain things to be done. Men are waiting for people to do certain kind of things. But hear me, child of God, it only needs a word. One word from God can change your life forever. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? I remember there was a time I went to a certain service. And while I was in that service, there was a man who was preaching there. And he was preaching a word. And the word he was preaching was going beyond. And I remember while I was there, the only thing that I had that was most valuable was this watch that I had been given by someone who had come from abroad. And I said, why should I carry an expensive watch? Yet my life is not expensive. I remember when he was preaching, I took off the watch. And I said, I can't look good yet. I know that my life is not good. I went and dropped it there. The man saw me and I believe he, the, the spirit led him. He called me to the top. He prayed for me and said, May the Lord take you beyond. Let me tell you, God, from that time, the things that have happened in my life, that has never happened to anybody in my family, the things that have happened in my life, that are not, that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are persistent encounters to people that are following me. Am I communicating to somebody? The reason why you can see such people, you can see from even my father, he can't call me by name. He can't call me by name. It is not because there is something unusual. No, there are encounters and barriers that were broken. I decree, may the Lord take you beyond. I said, may the Lord take you beyond. That was spoken over your life. That was spoken over your family. That is coming from the word of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let it burn the power us in the name of Jesus. So, so he began to walk on water. And the Bible says, as Peter began to walk on water, he reached to a dimension where he looked at the waves. And he began to sing. The enemy wants to bring you to a place. The enemy wants to bring you to an environment. Where he makes you think that what you are going through is the reality of your life and destiny. I told us that the biggest attack the enemy can bring is not lack of money. The biggest attack is when he can attack your faith. Amen. Because your faith is the currency to any transaction of the spirit. So, 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 as long as you can go through situations and your faith is intact, oh, it bothers the enemy. Why are you not blaming God? As long as Job can be hit by situations and he can stand and say, I know that my Redeemer liveth, there is a time he shall be rewarded double. And remember when the devil went to God, he said, take everything that he has and see if he will not curse you. In, in destroying Job's businesses, in killing his children, huh? In giving him a disease that was incurable in those days. The focus was not on the disease. The focus was not on the children. The focus was not on the businesses. The focus was on his faith. So a lot of people get to a place where they do not understand the craftiness of the enemy. Pushing you to a place where you reach a place where you say, but I think God can do it. And you know what the, what, what the Bible says? Do you know what the Bible says? Huh? 
you have been bound by the words that came out of your mouth. The enemy has no legal ground until you say it. The devil has no legal ground until you confess it. As long as you say, not me, it is still a battle. Amen. And there is something that, a scripture that I believe we have overread, but we have not yet gotten to a place where we've understood what it says. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. Resist the devil. And you what? You what? Uh, 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 you what? Reading that scripture already, it's opening you up to the strategies of the spirit. Your, your humility to God is your, the way you become a subject to his word. The way you submit to his word. But there is a secret that has just been spoken that you repeated. Resist him and he will flee. The Bible is trying to show you that it's that the Bible is not spoken about small demons. The Bible clarified that it is the devil who will flee. <laughs> Meaning, you have ability that as long as with his impatience he sees your ability to stand, he will not waste his energy and resources. On a battle, he cannot win. Oh. You know those brothers, you know those sisters, that despite what they were going through, they became fervent in prayer. And people were wondering, what kind of a person is this? That their life is in tatters. They are ravaged. They are, they are, they are, they are Barring in the ravages of poverty, yet they are still praying. But when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth were turned with laughter. We did not laugh, but our mouth were turned and filled with laughter. There is a way, there is a way, there is a way the enemy cannot stand a person who knows how to resist. He cannot. If you see him keeping on pressing on one thing, it's because even you, you are not consistent in pressuring on that same thing. That is why when he comes, he sees that, oh, this one, he comes in another way. Not the same way because he knows that you have understood the tactics of resisting. So Peter could not. He looked at the situation around him. He saw the waves. He said, my babo. <laughs> <laughs> we are dead here. Because of you, I'm glad. The Bible says he began to sink. Why is he sinking? Because remember, he started knowing Jesus only now. He walked to Jesus for three and a half years. He was not there when Jesus was there for, for 30 years. So everything he knows is what he's being taught now. So the moment he sees the wind, this is the environment he has grown up. He has been a fisherman. He knows this type of the wind you go. The same way you have been taught since you were young, you know that this type of money, ah, my life is finished. This money that I'm... <laughs> you can check and you know this type of relationship, ah, it's not going anywhere, this one. Why? Because it's something you've been around for long. So you understand certain signs. So that is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants to bring you and to make you stay in a situation so that your mind can conform in that situation. That even sometimes when it is not the reality, but because you know the signs and what comes next, you already create even in your mind a reality that is not yet a reality. Am I communicating to somebody? Yeah. Am I communicating to somebody? Yeah. So when you stay in that environment for long, the enemy makes sure that he messes up your mind. That when you see what you see already, you are saying, things are not going to be well. Things are going to be bad. Am I communicating to somebody? Yeah. Am I communicating to somebody? Yeah. That's why the Bible says, do not be conformed to the things of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To be conformed is to take shape. Like water. This same water 
if I can put it in a dish, it conforms to the shape of the dish. But anything that transforms, you cannot trap it because it is always moving. Can you trap waves? Can you trap frequency? That is what God wants to become. The Bible says in the book of John chapter number 4, if you read around verse number 21, the Bible says that children of the spirit are like the wind. You cannot detect where they go or where they are coming from, but you can hear the sound. Praise God. Praise God. So the Bible declares that Peter, when he saw the winds, he began to sink. You can already see what is making you to sing. That sometimes is not a reality. David calls and said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. But you didn't read that scripture. He says the valley of the shadow, not the valley of death. Because most of the times the enemy makes sure that he brings what is of like a reality. That is why the Bible declares that the devil rose like a lion, seeking somebody to devour. Hear me? He rose like a lion. He is not a lion. The reason he's rolling like a lion, he knows that the people I'm rolling to, they are afraid of lions. Oh, you didn't hear that. So he comes in disguise of a lion. So that he can devour you if he can roll in your finances. And you are afraid of becoming broke. He will defy you. If he can roll in your marriage. And you are afraid that this marriage is on a string or on a rock. He will devour you. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? But if he can meet somebody like David who says, you are roaring like a lion and I like it because I serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. The same God who delivered me from a lion and a bear, who delivered me from this situation. David understood. As long as God is with me, he is a multi-purpose God. And the Bible calls him the multi-breasted God. The I am that I am. The monarch of the universe. The one who sits upon the chambers of the world. The one who spreads the clouds as the curtains of heaven. Yeshua HaMashiach. His eyes are like fire. Out of his nose comes some steam. Out of his mouth comes what brimstone. He is the Yeshua HaMashiach. When he sneezes, the foundations of the earth are made plain. David understood. He said, no matter what can stand in front of me, it is just a fallacy. It is not reality. That is what people of the spirit do. And most of the times when you become spiritual, people think that you are not normal. Because things that people are scared of, most of the times you take them as a joke. And most of the things, most of the things you took as a joke turned out that nothing happened. But the things you were really afraid of and took as a reality, it happened. So, sometimes God is trying to speak to you in that way. Praise God. Amen. So, he said, come. And he began to walk. And the devil did not say, come. The devil spoke through the waves. And when Peter was in that place, the Bible says, he called out to Jesus for help. For those that call upon the name of the Lord shall not be put to shame. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So, you begin to understand that when it comes to life, the reality of life is in your establishment in the word. Until the word becomes a part of you, you cannot create your environment. People of God, the reason why we are here is so that we can be able to create and to expand that which God has deposited already. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? The reason you are here is so that you can create an environment where you have dominion, an ecosystem that you rule. 
As long as you are still in an environment you do not have, have dominion over, you have not started your mandate. There are people that even, even at the house where they stay, they can't even control the environment. And most of them is touched by controlling you yourself. I'm coming. <laughs> are you able to control your appetite? It's not just food appetite, man. <laughs> your appetite. <laughs> Because if you cannot control yourself, how are you able to control things around you? Oh. Your finances will not be in control until you are able to control yourself. <laughs> Am I communicating with somebody? Amen. Am I... <laughs> there is a post that I posted and I, I saw backlashes in my inbox. Where I, <laughs> where I say, some, some guys have a highly impactful hereditary spirit of poverty. You get an increase, you already want to add your woman on top. Appetite. Hey. <laughs> Appetite. <laughs> you, you can't control yourself. How would you want to control something that is coming in your environment? Yet you can't control your environment. You can't control your eyes from some energy that can pass. How are you able to rebuke a demon? There was a, you can't even control your own eyes. And you want to see us in the spirit. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes never to look upon a woman. My communication is about. You enter into prayer. And the Lord is led into prayer. Just five minutes into prayer. Let's just give you more. Ten minutes into prayer. Already, you're already on TikTok. <laughs> I'll reduce volume and just be speaking in tongues. But your mind is no longer there. Because prayer is not, it's not the vocal. It's not yabola, takibola, yiba. Hear me. Prayer, it is when the mind and the spirit are in one place. So if, if you pray for 11 hours and it was only two minutes where your mind and your spirit was in one place, all these hours you prayed, you were not doing anything. You prayed for two minutes. You did pray for two minutes. And there, and there are people that you, you see, they, they've become faithful in the time they pray. It might be short, but they understand how to focus in that time. And you see results. You want to see your environment changing. Start with you. The spiritual can never dominate to a person who does not know how to discipline themselves. That is why you see, at most of the times, we get to a place where even as gifted as we can be, we become frustrated. We become frustrated. And you know what God will do? Because it's a gift, he allows you to operate. Do you know that there are people that are accurate in the prophetic? Very accurate. Very accurate in the prophetic. Not because of discipline, but because it's a gift. And they can give you direction over your life. But they can't give themselves direction. Discipline. Discipline. And God is trying to communicate to you because he wants you to reach a place where you become a custodian of his presence. God wants men to come to a place where you don't always go back to God and call God. Uh -uh. You get to a place where you fix things here and now. Am I going to get in somebody? Amen. That's why you saw that time. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. That time when I spoke about Moses, that he was given a road, something he had. God was trying to show him that I am imparting my power to you so that you can operate as me. So he took the road. And it was the same road that you saw him doing miracles with over and over again. 
But there is a time when the children of Israel went to him and they said, yes, we need water. <laughs> you know how people are. <laughs> you are the one who took us. They didn't say God. You are the one who took us from Egypt. You want us to die here. Say, give us water. He felt so much pressure. And that is what the enemy wants. It is at the point of pressure that either you transform or you make mistakes. You went to God and God says, what do you want? What are you doing here? If you, if you read the response of God when Moses went to God, you will see that God was tired. I have given you authority so that you can fix things there. That is why God did not put his office here because if God had put his office here in Hampton Road, they kill only. So he had to put his office where you can't reach even with the plan. He said, let me put people there and say, ah, I'm tired for now. Praise God. Amen. But the reason he did that is because he wants you to become a custodian. That is why you saw that God established the establishment of families. That it starts by how you build the environment and create the family that shows how you are going to impact the world. Have you ever read in Titus? When Apostle Titus was speaking about being a man of God. Huh? When he says, how can you lead the church of God yet you can't lead your family? And he goes on to say, if you can't lead your family, don't. <laughs> and what he was trying to say is, it starts with what God has given you. Praise God. Amen. Increase starts with what God has given you. You can't pray for a mansion, yet you can't take care of a one-room house. It's biblical. The Bible says, and God in the book of uh, Genesis, Genesis on chapter number two, the Bible says, and God did not allow rain to come. He only allowed Jew so that they can only be sustenance but not growth. The reason was because there was no man to till the ground. The word no man to till the ground, when you study it in Hebrew, it means to manage. So if you can't manage your environment, it is hard for God to bring increase. That is why the Bible says, he who is faithful in the what? In the little is entrusted with much. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So as you begin to descend the voice of God. God do not come to you and at the first point be accurate as you might wish and want him to be accurate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Come, let me show you this. Everyone who has ever gone into a place where they have operated and had God. At the first time, it will just be a word. If you are a preacher, you don't just rush and say, oh God, tell me that situation. Tell me what someone is going through. No. Because he has to train you. He has to what? So that <laughs> the, reason why, the reason why you see a lot of, a lot of inconsistency in the body it is because we rush for big things and we leave the basics. And God does not want us to operate in a way whereby we just switch. Uh -uh. God wants us to operate in a way where we know how to create the atmosphere for us to be there. Why is it so? Your footsteps in the spirit, you have to be able to trace them. Why must you be able to trace your footsteps in the spirit? Do you know the reason why David spoke that scripture and says a righteous man, a what? Righteous man falls how many times? Seven times and still what? That scripture did not say God raises him. Oh. 
he himself rises up. The reason is because as you become consistent, maybe you are praying an hour, right? With your prayer, you know the results that are coming. Praise God. With the prayer you are praying, you know the results that are what? So the moment you begin to see results not coming, you check on the things you are consistent on. So a lot of people, they want to get to a place where they attain the height. Everyone wants good things. Everyone wants big things. But there becomes the crippling thing. If you jumped, if you jumped in the spirit, huh? because you have to grow up, not to pop up. <laughs> so if you jump to be there, the moment you fall, because you, you did not take the steps to go there, you don't know the way. You become stuck. You become stuck. But to someone who understands the way, it becomes easier. If you read in the Bible, in the Bible any prophet you ever read of, they've, they go to a place where they've, they've been taught by God. Right? There was what was called the company of the prophets where people were taught. Right? There was a man called Elisha. He did not go to the company of the prophets. But he walked with a man called Elijah. And he began to learn the tricks of Elijah. Right? There's a particular point where the Bible says they came to him. And said immediately there's an emergency because there is no water. For people to drink and we want to go for, for a war. And the Bible says, Elisha said to them, I know I'm a prophet. He is a prophet anointed. He is a mentor of the prophetic. But at that particular time he could not just prophesy. There has to be an atmosphere that has to be created. That is why a lot of people get to a place where they begin to lie. You know why? Because they force it. Now. <laughs> so they said to him, we want you to speak a word from above. And Elisha said, bring me a man who can play a mystery. A man who can play an instrument. Oh, God. I want you to listen to this carefully. What were they looking for? What were they looking for? Direction. What were they looking for? Direction. The prophet did not just prophesy. I'm just going to teach you two in the Bible. The prophet did not just what? Prophesy. When you come and say, I need direction. I want to go to a certain land. And while you are speaking, you, you just hear a person saying, ah. you, you have to begin to ask yourself. The Bible says, the, the prophet says, I am a prophet, anointed. The mentor is upon me. I have bought the mantle and the protection of the prophetic. The garment of Elijah and the horses, the horses of fire of Elijah. But bring me a man who can play the mystery. Well, when the man come and he began to play the instrument. Now, the instruments connected to the octaves of the spirit and the rhythm. Remember what I said. When the mind and the spirit meets, God begins to speak. That moment the mystery is being played, the man is worshipping. Right? And all of a sudden he tells them a strategy. Dig wells. Do this, God is going to do it. He did not just prophesy because what they needed that time did not just need a declaration from men who is empowered spiritually. It also needed the glory to manifest. All right. When the glory manifests, what happens is there are activities of the spirit that are translated to be physical. That is why you see that there are what we call miracles, right? You are having a headache. I pray for you. You are healed. But there are what are called creative 
miracles. It's a different thing. Miracles, it's something, the pain you're feeling inside, but the bone is broken. It can be seen that is broken. And it has been like that for years, or it's like this, and suddenly, th those are creative miracles. They are created. The glory is needed. So he played a mystery. It's not only on that portion that we see such a thing happening. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It is not only that portion that we see such a thing happening. Where worship had to be done for a miracle to happen through a servant of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So, the moment you get to a place where you are to desire for direction, God has already given us a template. God has already given us a what? Have you ever seen if you grew up, okay, you can sit down now. If you grew up at a place where you grew up with a prayerful mother, huh? when things are tough in the house, what do they do? Are you sure? They would close themselves, sing hymns. And all of a sudden, you see them leaving the house. It was in that connecting with the spirit that an idea was dropped into their spirit. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The second thing, you have to understand that when you are to operate in an aspect where you are discerning the voice of God, you are discerning the voice of what? You are discerning the voice of God. You need to understand the aspect of authority. You need to understand the aspect of what? Authority. The Bible tells us of something we are to be speaking about next week in explain, explaining in more depth. The Bible tells us about the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman had a need. What did she want? Are you sure? <laughs> she didn't want a child. The reason why she wanted the man of God in the house was because bringing a man of God in the house is like bringing an ark of the covenant in your house. So everything around you, remember when the ark of the covenant was put in the house of Obed-Edom. Huh? Yes. When they put the ark of the covenant in the house of Obed-Edom, the Bible says everything began to prosper. When they took Joseph and put him in the house of Potiphar, Potiphar said everything began to increase because Joseph was in his house. When Jacob was taken into the house of what? The Bible says everything in the house of Laban, that Laban went to a spiritualist, not a man of God. Laban went to a spiritualist and the spiritualist told him, Laban, everything that is in your house has increased because there is a man among you. So the Shunammite woman understood that the reason what is happening in my life now, I need to bring a man carrying a presence. I need to bring a man who understands the ways of God into my vicinity. In, in, in actual worldly sense, there is what there is what there is what they say that you are you. They say your association determines your accumulation. Am I communicating to somebody? So once you bring a man who is filled of the spirit, there is no way our environment will become dry. Once you bring a man who understands the spirit, there is no way our environment becomes a dry environment, an unproductive environment. The son of my trauma said, bring Elisha here. She had to build a room. She had to put him there. And she had to be giving him water. But they came to a point where the prophet, the moment he was in the environment, he began to see 
things that were lacking. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? There's a real child of God where you can stay in the presence of God. But there are things that are not in order. You do not need to pray for them. There is a way you can stay in the spirit. There is a way you can stay in the session. There is a way that God, you do not need to pray for that car. You do not need to pray for that health. You do not need to pray for that job. The spirituality begins to search for those things that are inadequate. I heard the prophet say, what is it? What is it, guys, that is not in the house? And God said, we have never seen a child's feet print here. We have only been seeing goats and chicken feet print. I said, bring the woman here. And the Bible says, the prophet looked at the woman and said, what is it that you want? me to do for you. Listen, not what you want God. What is that you want me to do for you? The prophet was putting his reputation on the line. Remember what I told you that the spirit it is filled. Right? Amen. I'll take it from scripture. The Bible tells us about the woman with the issue of blood. That she had a problem that had been there for how many years? 12 years. And by that time, this is a critical situation. She comes and she touches the hem of the garment of Jesus. And the Bible says, Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. Do you know what that means? Power is gone. Do you know what that means? I feel empty. If I was to make my own translation, Jesus, I feel empty. Who touched me? If you have been a person who has been a minister, while you are praying for people in those all nights, after praying for people, you can feel it that inside there is nothing. Let's go for prayer and refill. So he says, What is it that I can do? I, I will empty every anointing and grace on me for that thing to happen. So the Bible says, she said, I don't want anything. I am wealthy. <laughs> you have never met such people. I have met such people who say, after they've given, you say, ah, we, I need to pray. Say, I think everything is fine. Just pray for grace and favor. <laughs> she said, I'm wealthy. I stay well with people. They, I have no enemies. My husband is fine. Ah, the man of God said, next year about this time, you shall be carrying a child. A baby boy. The woman looked at him and said, do not lie to your maid servant. Hear me. The woman had met prophets before. <laughs> do not lie to your maid servant. She had been prophesied before. This thing did not start today. But look at the aspect of the, this is the number two that I'm showing. Look at the aspect. Those that prophesied here never stayed in the upper room. So when they were prophesying, it was a word of what they saw. And next week we need to write this down. Because there is a difference between prophesying and the authority to manifest the prophecy. Those are two different things. To be accurate in the prophetic does not mean you now carry the, 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 the oh God. you now carry the ability to command the prophetic word to be tangible. If you go in the book of First Peter, Paul speaks to Peter. He says to Timothy, in, in the book of First Timothy, he says, Timothy, my son, concerning the prophecies, look for it, concerning the prophecies that were said over your life, use them to fight a good fight. So the prophecy is there. But Paul is telling him, you see that prophecy? Use it to fight, otherwise it won't manifest. So the accuracy, the, the energy 
is not the authority to manifest. So they were prophesying the Shunammite woman, but they were not, hear me, they were not in the environment with her. They were not associated or close to her. This thing needs to be taught extensively. They were not. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. They were not. They had not accepted her. Or her even accepting them. Do you know that if she kept on refusing and Elijah, Elisha had no authority, she was not going to conceive. Because even when you prophesy, and the person you are prophesying to, they can they have ability to, to, to block receptance of the word. They have ability. That is why the enemy fights people's beliefs so that even when a word is spoken, you can be able to block a good word. Say me, no, 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 no. It can't happen. And already spiritually, you have blocked. You have found it? <laughs> Timothy, my son, concerning the prophecies that were said over your life, use them to fight a good warfare. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord give you authority. Amen. So when she was staying in that house, when he was staying in that house, he familiarized with that environment, but not only that, he began to deal with the spirits of the house of the Shunammite woman. So it was different from other prophets because they were just prophesying, but they never got to deal with the spirit that was causing the barrenness. They never got to deal with the spirit that was causing a not to conceive. Am I communicating to somebody here? So the prophecy was broken, but there was still resistance in the spirit. The many people that are carrying heavy prophecies, but spiritually, there is still a barrier that can be broken. There are many people that are carrying great destinies, but there are battles that they need to fight. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? When God was prophesied, and there was told that many men of God go and, go and defeat the media myths, the Bible says God said to God, I wanted to wake up at night, and when you wake up at night, I wanted to build an altar for me, and destroy the altar of prayer, who is fighting? I was a priest. What was making Gideon not to rise? Yet he had recognized him as a mighty man. What was making the family of Gideon to be the poorest of the house of Ephraim? Yet Gideon had an anointing of greatness. What was making the family of Gideon to be the least? Yet Gideon was a mighty man. There was an altar and the father was a priest. What it was broken, the prophetic word manifested automatically. Gideon did not need to call people. Gideon did not need to train to be an army commander. Because if you read your Bible, Gideon was never trained to fight. But when an altar was broken, ability was activated. There are people that are supposed to become wealthy. When you see them struggle, it is not because they don't carry the anointing. Uh -uh. There is something that is to be dealt with. That's why even before a prophetic word is released, somebody has got to understand that I am ready to use this prophecy to fight. If I am prophesied that I am going to give birth, if there is a spirit of barrenness, I will use the prophetic word. God, just say it in your word. Be fruitful and multiply. I stand with your word. Your Bible declares your word is like a hammer that breaks stones into pieces. Your Bible says in your word, that the word of the Lord is like a two-edged sword that divided to asunder between the bone and the marrow. Your Bible says in the word, your word do not come back to the void. But yet fear for fear what is essential to do. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in the name that is above every other name. Whatever you are going through, whatever has been happening in your life, be it financially, be it career-wise, be it marital-wise, be it the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord change your story. I said, may the Lord change your story. I said, may the Lord change your story. What is that? I to pray. I prophesy in the mighty name of the power of Jesus.
Jesus. May that be lifting up in your life. I said, may that be lifting up in your life. May you break every record of your family. What men said you cannot do, what has never been done in your family, may you be the first one to do it. I said, the rules are broken. 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 By the reason of the anointing and the grace of the living God, I pray that the word that was spoken upon his life in the mighty name of the blood of Jesus will wipe it off. The Bible says in Colossians, he brought it out of the handwriting that was written upon his life. The handwriting, they used to write your name on a piece of paper that is written by the power of the Holy Ghost. They brought it out. They brought it out. They brought it out. They brought it out. What stopped your father cannot stop you. What stopped your mother cannot stop you. What stopped your grandmother cannot stop you. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord favor you. I say, may the Lord favor you. I say, may the Lord favor you. Lift up your voice and shout yes. Lift up your voice and shout yes. God will show you grace. God will show you grace. When Jesus said to Peter, come, it was no longer his ability. As long as you can walk in your ability, you are limited. As long as you can believe in your ability, you are limited. And even at the sight when God would have told you, come, you are going to see the winds. But despite the winds, the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews that looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, the original translation does not say looking unto Jesus. The original translation from, from the Hebrew says look away unto Jesus. Meaning whatever you've been seeing before is not a reality. I want you to focus on Jesus. Am I communicating to somebody here? There are things, hear me, God is the only person who can make you to sleep hungry and you wake up with plenty. Am I communicating to somebody here? God is the only God who you can sleep without a job. You wake up a soul. Am I communicating to somebody? God is the only God who can make Joseph to flee from the present to the palace. Am I communicating to somebody here? Hey, Kamala Marudaka. Kebo Dakaya. God. God, God has a way where he will touch you. That you will turn from being a tiny, downlooked, downplayed, underrated, unappreciated, ninipushas person <laughs> to become a high achiever. He will metamorphose you from becoming a lover to a butterfly in a second. It is God. I don't know how much you believe in God. But I believe we are in the season where the ordinary and the natural is no longer allowed to operate. Hear me. We are entering seasons where the spiritual is going to be deeper than before. Those that understand the spiritual are going to experience the spiritual. Those that do dark things are going to do it to the last. You cannot sit on the fence. Oh, God. You cannot sit on the fence. You cannot sit on the fence. Deep things you have never heard of, you see them live. But because you serve the almighty God, may the Lord embarrass those that are looking for your downfall. Amen. May the Lord embarrass those that are looking for your tears. Whoever wants you to cry, may they cry your cry this year. May they cry your cry this year. There are people, there are people that have vowed that whatever that belongs to you, they will make sure you don't enjoy it. 
There are people that have vowed that whatever that is yours, they will make sure that you will not enjoy it in the time of life. Hear me. The Bible says, David prayed a prayer. He says, give me that token for the good so that those that hate me can be ashamed. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord give you a token of favor. May the Lord give you that token for the good. May goodness and mercy follow you in the name of Jesus. May your spiritual life become a reality and may you begin to operate in the realityness of the spirit. May the Lord speak to you accurately and advise you and give you ideas of businesses and opportunities in the name of Jesus. May the Lord break you free from hereditary traps and bondages, sicknesses and patterns and cycles in Jesus' mighty name. May the prophetic grace of God become so tangible and visible in your life. And may you hear God more accurately than ever. May the Lord become a witness in you. And may you never make wrong decisions because he will speak to you. May the Holy Spirit become your friend. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's stand up on your feet. Mando Kapaya. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. One of the things you desire the more. of the things you desire the more is to make sure that God speaks to you. Praise God. When you can hear the voice of God, there is no way you can miss it in life. Am I communicating to somebody? When you can hear the voice of God, there is no way you can be deceived. That should be your desire. Among everything else, that should be your desire. <laughs> Hearing his voice. Praise God. Amen. That should be your desire. Amen. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Oh God, as I pray, may my ears be open that I can hear you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And I, praise God. And I want you to capture it as we are going to. I want you to capture it as we are going to deal with certain matters of the spirit. Praise God. I told us that I told us that we are going to I told us that we are going to speak on we are going to speak on the sicknesses of the spirit that will be next week praise God I told us that we are going to speak of the sicknesses of the spirit praise God as we'll be finishing on Elijah but I want you to pray that God opens your ears and eyes so that you do not get to a place where you become used to this mundane realm, to this mundane life. The enemy wants you, the enemy wants you to become so used to this life. And this life has no, you have no success, you have no portion of success if you are to live as a mortal man. Because anything that is mortal, there has to be a transaction with the devil. Your success is bound in the spirit. Am I going to get into somebody? Amen. Your success as a believer is, comes from the spirit, comes from the kingdom. And you need the voice of God more than anything for you to succeed. You need the voice of God more than anything for you to succeed. I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. May you open my spiritual ears. May you open my spiritual eyes. Just open up your mouth and begin to pray.